Hello, Mrs. Neumeyer here, back with our probability studies. Now, have you ever heard of odds? Maybe in terms of sports, like what are the odds that this team is going to win? Or if we talk about an underdog team, meaning the odds are against them that they're going to win. Um, Maybe think of the David and Goliath story. What were the odds that David could defeat Goliath? Pretty low, right? The odds were not in his favor. A big, a huge giant with a small shepherd boy. Um, so when we talk about odds, it's, are, what is, are they in favor of one over the other? Or are the odds even, like the 50-50 chance that something's going to happen or someone's going to win? What are the odds? So we hear that a lot in, in, um, in sports and different, different activities. Or what are the odds that it's going to snow today? Stuff like that. So today we're going to be talking about odds. Now, what if I were to say, I'm going to split the class in half. One group on one side, one group on the other side. And I'm going to say, I'm going to flip a coin. Remember our coin toss activity? I'm going to flip a coin, and if it's heads, this side gets the candy. If it's tails, this side is going to get a piece of candy. Is that fair? If I flip the coin, chances are half and half, 50-50. Alright, what if I were to say, I'm going to roll dice. And if it get a 1 or a 2, that team's going to get a candy. If I get a 3, 4, 5, or 6, that team's going to get a piece of candy. Is that fair? Hmm. Well, let's look. Alright, if I flip a coin, what are the chances team A will get it or team B? Well, one out of two, right? If it's heads, we have a one in, out of two chance or tails, a one out of two chance. Pretty good odds. All right, what about the one or two roll of the dice? Three, four, five, six. Ooh, okay, so a little bit different now. Now remember our desired outcome over our total outcome. So what's our total? Well, our total is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? There's six different ways this could go, or just six different numbers I could roll on my die. So that's our total. Now for team A, if I say if your team, if I roll a one or a two, you're gonna get the candy. How many opportunities do they have, or what are those? For their desired outcome is either a one or a two, right? So they have two out of the six. What about this team, team B? One, two, three, four. Well, when we talk about odds, we're going to do something a little bit differently here. We're going to express it in a different way than we have been expressing the probability so far. So odds, okay, our odds for this one are two are for team A and four are against. So our odds are two to four. When we, talk, when we write the odds, we're gonna do them with a little colon here. Or if we reduce it, those of you, the students that are in higher math, you know how to reduce it, one to two. Now for this, our odds would be four to two, four for going for team B and two against. And so the odds there would be two to one. And that's how we express odds. Now up here where it was an even chance, it's one to one. The odds are one to one. You're either gonna get heads or tails. One to one for A, and one to one for team B, even chances. That's why if I were to give, be giving out candy, you'd want me to use the, toy, the coin, right? Not the dice to determine who's going to get it if we used it based on these parameters. Well, for our activity today, we're gonna to be practicing with these two different things. We're gonna be flipping our coin and we're gonna be rolling the dice. All right, 
I have a handout here where you can keep track of how many times you and your group get heads or tails. And you can t make your tally marks here. You go like one, two, three, four, cross hatch for five. And then you can keep track of your rolls on the dice. So for every time you roll it, and say you get a four, that's what I just got, I would make a tally mark under this. Now work together in groups. You can either have a partner or work together in more groups than that, or you can do this on your own. And keep track and do say, 12 flips of your coin and see how, what your totals are. Which did you get the most of, heads or tails? And then you can do your rolling of your dice and keep track of your results here and what totals did you get for each of them. And see if you come up with some predictions of, is it gonna be fair if one group has the one and two, they get the candy, or three, four, and five, and six. You can practice with that and see how that would turn out if that was an actual scenario. If group A was going to get the candy if they if we rolled a one or a two, see how many times, see what their total is versus the three, four, five, and six. Tally those up and see what you come up with. And then you can come together in a group and see, did everyone else get the same results as, as your group did or as you did? and compare those and talk about those odds. Now, I like to think about this in terms of when we're thinking about creation, like we talked about the first week, where what are the odds, what are the chances that all of this happened by chance? You know, when, you know I think about the combinations of pizzas, and every time we added another topping, it got more and more complex, like our chances of getting the pizza Instead of being one out of eight, when we added one more topping, we had one out of 16. Well, think about our eyeball, just our eyeball, and how complex it is. What are the chances just one of those things could have happened? And then all those different things that our eyes can do, like the irises, you know, can dilate and get smaller and bigger, or that our how our optic nerve works, or all those different things. Just every time we add another complexity, it makes the chances of that happening even smaller. I like to think of it like the bag. Remember the bag where we were pulling out the uh, different color, uh, uh, not coins, but uh, chips, and, and we pull those out. Imagine our whole room here was filled with a certain color of chips and just one of them was the color we wanted like the gumball machine I liked the blue what if we had one blue gumball in here and filled the rest of the room with the orange ones and then I had to try to pick and I kept picking and picking what it, how likely would it be that I'm gonna pick the blue one not very likely right because it's a whole room full of the orange ones well, when we think of the universe and, and the chances of all of these things just coming together by chance, how likely is it? If we, it's, it's even bigger than if this room was filled with gumballs. It would be like if this you know, whole universe was filled with gumballs and we had to try to find that one blue one. It would be like the chances of this universe or just even one of these things happening on its own. And that helps us to determine, or when, as we think about these origins and how did things come to be, we can use some of that probability and those ideas of the odds and the chances of things. Did all these things happen by chance? To me, it seems pretty unlikely. But using these tools of probability, you can determine for yourself how likely you think it is that all of these things came together by chance. Or could they have come together by our creator? Well, next week we're going to be learning in our memory work in science, Psalm 19.1, that says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Studying probability helps us see a little bit more into what is meant by that verse, right? The skies declare his glory. Everything declares the work of his hands. In Isaiah 48, 13, it also says, My own hand, which is 
God speaking here, my own hand laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand spreads out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together. One more verse for you, Romans 1, 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. All of nature is showing us signs of his attributes, his glory, and everything that he has made points to him. I hope the study of probability helps you see that even more as you investigate and look and look for signs of him and his wonderfulness and his wonderful creation, all pointing to him who made it all. See you next time.